Hey everyone, welcome back. This is episode 13 of Learning Motion Control with PLCs. On this episode, I wanted to show you a tool that I've used for not only motion control, but just throughout all the machines I've programmed that's just been completely invaluable. That tool is the TwinCat Scope View. Or, I call it Scope View. I think they called it Scope View in TwinCat 2. This is now called the Measurement Scope so what you do is create a new project in uh, XAE. You can add this as a project to your solution, but I couldn't figure that out earlier, so I'm not going to worry about it. Do a new scope YT, so that's a Y-axis, and time, just like we drew that uh, diagram in MS Paint last time. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new project here. And when it loads up, you have this project right there. So you could bring this into your other solution if you want, but I'm going to keep them separate now. No big deal. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here is add some data to our graph. And we'll do that by going into the target browser. You see my local machine here, which doesn't help us much because we're running on a remote PLC. These are going to be all of your routes that you've set up. So you can scope from a bunch of different sources at the same time and all on one, one graph. It's pretty awesome. So in here we've got our PLC task, our NC task, which would be what's running the axes and then port 851. I'm back on TwinCat 2, every runtime used to run on 801, 802, 803, 804 because you are allowed up to four uh, PLC runtimes concurrently uh, with TwinCat and I believe that's a per core thing so if you had two cores you could run eight tasks. I've rarely found much of a need to run more than one runtime other than uh, collaborating between uh, programmers and having basically being able to modularize your code into a runtime but it usually causes more grief than you really want to deal with so anyway that's why we're on port 851 it's always going to be there by default but you can change it if you want so this hopefully will look familiar we got global variables uh, just a whole lot everything that's global in the system is going to show up in this list we haven't defined any really in, in our project thus far so main here this all should look very familiar this is our declarations from the top of the other program so we're going to add in a few things that we're using. This velocity command is just my foot pedal once I've scaled it. So I'm going to add that by double clicking it. I'm going to come down and find axis B here. Actually, I'm going to look in here. NC to PLC. This is where we're going to get our status of our motor. So what we want to find here is actual position. And we should be able to find where is actual velocity. There it is. Okay, actual velocity. Uh, that should be enough to get going for now. Let's head back over to main, and I'm going to grab I state just because I like watching the state. That's something that's been incredibly helpful uh, to watch machinery and you know watch sensors and find out if a sensor is flickering on you and stuff like that. So uh, let's get this going now. One other thing I like to do on here, if you click on the chart itself, you have a default display width. I'm going to kick that up to about 30 seconds. And then if you go up one more level to the project, you've got still more settings. I'll move this down. Come on, cursor window. Uh, so we have a record time here. We'll kick that up to 60 seconds. And it, this runs in your, your local computer's memory. So you can record you know 30 minutes if you want, depending on your scan rate and stuff like that. And you can set skip rate and all that. And ring buffer, let's turn to true because then we can just trigger our, our, uh, our chart here in a second and then we'll just manually trigger it out whenever we want. And it's not going to fill our computer up. It'll just keep one uh, minute of data and it'll drop the last second off as it predicts on the next second and so on. So I'm ready to uh, start recording. There's this record up here. So as soon as you have your uh, variables defined, you can go ahead and hit record and it will get online with the PLC over ADS and start pulling data. Okay, so now that the scope is running, I still have my PLC set up ready to run with the uh, program we made in the last video when I push the foot pedal. So I'm going to slam the foot pedal down and we'll watch it run. Okay, let's run it one more time. Okay, so that got us some data. I'm going to stop our graph and we'll take a look at it. 
All right, so hopefully you can see we've got some decent data here. Uh, I'm actually going to turn this chart black because I just like looking at it better that way. So this red line now is where my foot pedal crossed the threshold and started off the state machine. So you can actually zoom in on that. And we'll see right as, boom, we cross threshold somewhere around here. You can see the state rise up on the very next PLC scan. As it moves across here, so this, this shows as rounded. Let's see what it actually looks like. Eh, state 300, state 310. Okay, so it is actually rounded off there. It seemed a little weird for a second there. Um, but what what we're looking for really, this is the state machine as it traverses across and it goes up and then there's our loop and then we go to state 500. So you can really use this to visualize machine cycles and find out like any long section like this, you can go and say, well, what is taking that long? Does it match my design time? Is there something going wrong? Is there a sensor it's waiting for that it only needs to see briefly? You know, all that sort of stuff you can figure out with these graphs. So hopefully that's pretty obvious how useful this can be. But let's look at our motion here real quick. Zooming in a little more, we've got this blue here that is a, uh, a, a trapezoidal move, which we talked about in the last video. So we accelerate up. We hit our, our commanded velocity max, which is 100. We traverse at that all the way over until we have to decelerate to make our zero point and we hit zero and so very quickly we jump back up this is position so we see a pretty linear move there most of the time and then this position sort of sinusoidal there because we have these triangular moves and you can see just a small nub there where our software is doing its work um, that or this is uh, likely if you look back at this move here Let's see, let's zoom back in on the very leading edge of this trapezoid. You can see a tiny bit of jerk limiting happening here. So if this was a perfect slope, then, uh, I mean, this is the feedback velocity, so we could have a little bit of like inertia stuff going on, but this is very likely the jerk uh, slowing down our A cell ramp. So uh, that's just the position is in green, the, uh, the velocity is in blue, and the acceleration is the slope of the blue line could have mapped uh, acceleration as well from the NC to PLC, but we don't need to. I think you get the gist here. So I wanted to show you guys this. Uh, the ring buffer option is good to know about. And of course, uh, let's do cover cursors real quick. So you right click and cursor window has to be showing here. Or it helps to show it because that's where you're going to actually get your data. But a little bit counterintuitive here. You have to add a new cursor. So I'm going to add this one. He's bright green, but you could change his color if you wanted. So as I move along here, here, let's change him to something darker just to make sure you guys can see it. A lot of colors. Dark magenta. So we take our dark magenta cursor and we can walk it along here. And if you watch something like current velocity here, we can just walk it right along and see at every scan of the PLC with our time uh, here we can look at. At every scan of the PLC, we can see what that value is. And uh, doing that sort of thing for you know debugging analog systems is really amazing. So this is the scope view. Uh, there's a professional version of it that gives you some reporting capabilities and things like that. And you can uh, actually trigger these from the PLC with some function blocks and export them automatically if you pay the licensing fee to do that. But even without paying the licensing fee, this comes free with uh, TwinCat's engineering XAE stuff that you use to program their hardware and so you can do most of this um, right out of the box and get a ton of, of visibility into what's happening inside your code because a lot of these state transitions are happening in two milliseconds three milliseconds uh, whatever your scan time is and actually right now mine's at 10 but still these things happen so quickly there's no way you'll be able to see it so um, looking at this code um, is a great way to handle that as well as uh, just moving back to the main program there you can put timers in all of these states and record them uh, so you have state transition times history stuff like that so i've found that using a combination of a state history array which i believe we talked about in the first plc series but using a combination of a state um, history array and timers for moves and things like that instrumenting your code and then also being able to go and scope it those two things together make debugging and you know post-mortem analysis really nice so 
that's basically it that I wanted to show you on that. And uh, we will move on to some other motion types in the next video, or at least I'll talk about them. We're, we're getting pretty well wrapped up with actual motion demos and things with my test stand. So uh, with that said, I'll see you on the next video, and we'll talk about NCI and CNC machines and stuff like that. Catch you on that one. Bye.